Hello, many thanks for joining us on Infrastructure this week. I am Tina Oje. More than 70,000 languages are spoken around the world, yet sports and beauty are universal languages that are understood by everyone around the globe. Sport has the power to change the world by shifting the focus from individualism to teamwork. Sport has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. Sport infrastructure plays a crucial role in achieving excellence in the global arena of sport. It not only helps in producing sport persons of intellectual repute, but also encourages the young population of a country to participate in sporting activities. The lack of infrastructural facilities or poor maintenance culture is one of the major constraints in the development of sport in Nigeria. On this week's edition of the program, we shall be taking a look at the state of sporting infrastructure in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, with special focus on the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, a three playground among other facilities in the city. Do follow us on all our social media handles now showing on your screen. Let's take this break. We'll be back shortly. Thanks for staying. Here are some of the top stories that made the news on infrastructure in Nigeria and around the world this week. China began construction on brass shipyard in Bayasa. All roads and bridges under construction in Apapa to open in October. In Kenya, President Kenyatta commissions construction of new hospitals in Nairobi's informal settlement. Details of these stories and more in a moment. The federal government said it has begun a feasibility study for the construction of a shipyard in Brass Island, Bayasa State which will be ready in six months to cater for the maintenance and repair services of cargo vessels, oil tankers and liquefied natural gas (NNG) carriers. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timipre Silva, who chaired the project, kicked off meetings stated that it will be executed by China Harbor Engineering Company, which had carried out similar projects across the globe as well as in Nigeria. The minister noted that the high traffic of vessels in and out of Nigeria provided huge opportunity to retain substantial value in country through the provision of dry dock services. He said that the shipyard project will further develop and enhance the nation's position in the oil and gas value chain and linkage to other sectors of the economy. On shipyard prospect, Chief Silva said that the Nigerian NNG's Train 7 project was expected to increase the company's LNG capacity from 22 MPTA to 30 MPTA. He said this would induce the acquisition of additional LNG carriers to the existing ones. The Lagos State Government says all road and bridges under construction in Apapa, the nation's port city, will be completed by October. Governor Babajide Sanwolu gave the assurance on Sunday during an inspection tour of roads and bridges under construction in Apapa area of Lagos. Samuelu said that the traffic gridlock experience in the Aziz will be cleared once the project were completed. The governor visited the Kostan Bridge, Alaka Bridge, Ijora Bridge, Marina Bridge, Liverpool, Lily Pond and Mao too, among others. He said that there was need to overhaul the entire Papa Road network to improve journey time in and out. He added that the state, in collaboration with the Nigerian Port Authority, was building another port in Lekki, which would be ready in two years' time to ease the pressure on Apapa. He said that the government was also in discussion with stakeholders and some private owners to create proper holding bay and with the coal system to get trucks out of the way and free the roads for easy movement. The federal government has said that global travel restriction occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic was preventing the technical expert from Russia from coming over to conduct an audit of the steel plant, even though the Senate last month expressed its readiness to work with the executive arm in reviving the Ajokuta Steel Company. The Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olami Lecon, a debite, while taking stock of activities in the last one year, however, noted that the technical audit of the plant 
would be done as soon as the flight restriction was over. He said that, that he's hopeful that our Jokuta will come on stream before the end of President Buhari's tenure. And when that happens, it is poised to create thousands of jobs. The minister revealed that the country was on its way to becoming a major gold producing hub in the West African region, which would diversify the country's revenue away from crude oil and create jobs for its teeming youthful population. He noted that the government was creating an enabling environment across the gold value chain. Adebite also said that Nigeria, for the first time, had mined, processed, and refined gold under the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative for use as part of Nigerian external reserves, adding that the first batch of the artisanal mine gold bar to be purchased by the central bank was unveiled at the presidential ceremony to President Buhari on July 6. Moving on to some stories on international scene. In Nairobi, President Uhuru Kenyatta has commissioned the construction of three new level three hospitals in Nairobi's informal settlement. The president witnessed the groundbreaking on Monday for the construction of 16 bed capacity hospitals at Muthao in Uthiru and Kianda in Kibra, as well as 24 bed facility at Meandalo village in Mokorukwa, Ruben. The three hospitals are part of 20 such facilities here marked for various parts of the city and are being developed by the Nairobi Metropolitan Service. Alongside the new health facilities, NMS is also fast-tracking the sinking of community boreholes to provide free, clean drinking water and upgrading of access roads to bitumen standard. Speaking to thousands of residents who turned out to welcome him, the president said the project are part of a grand plan to transform the outlook of the city, especially its informal settlement. He asked Kenyans to ignore disruptive and empty political rhetoric saying the government's focus is to improve the living standards of Nairobi's residents. The president urged Kenyans to continue protecting themselves from coronavirus by following the established health protocols. That's it on the infrastructure this week. The program continues after this break. Please to stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying. Nigeria, by all standards, should be one of the best sporting nations of the world. Going by the physiological makeup of the people, the large human capital and the many internationally acclaimed administrators and trainers at its disposal. Nigeria should rank among the top 10 countries in major international championships. In recent past, poor maintenance culture have been identified as a major setback in infrastructural development in Nigeria. There are indeed some fairly good sporting facilities in Nigeria, but without proper care, they become non-functional and abandoned. On Infrastructure This Week, we bring you a feature on the Abuja National Stadium, renamed in 2019 to Moshuda Abiola National Stadium by President Muhammad Buhari. Please do stay tuned. Moshuda Abiola National Stadium is a 60,491 capacity stadium, formerly known as the National Stadium. It's a multi-purpose national sports stadium located in Abuja, the federal capital territory of Nigeria. Although Nigeria had several stadiums scattered throughout the country, there was a lack of stadiums that met international standards. The capital city of Nigeria, Abuja, was selected to host the 8th All-African Games in 2000, a regional multi-sport event held every four years, organized by the Association of National Olympic Committees of Africa. Despite having no facilities for such a major sporting event, the federal government of Nigeria embarked on a multi-million dollar project for the construction of a state-of-the-art stadium and games village to be completed in time to host the All-African Games. The federal government of Nigeria approved the contract for the construction of the National Stadium Complex and Games Village on 18 July 2000. The contract for the design of the stadium was awarded to Shilan Benjamin and three partners, a world-renowned structural engineering firm based in Stuttgart, Germany. They were responsible for the architectural design, execution planning, as well as construction and supervision of the stadium. The construction was done in cooperation with a local engineering firm that has served the country for decades. Julius Berger Nigerian PRC, a subsidiary of Bill Finger Berger AG, 
was responsible for the construction of the main stadium, providing manpower, supplies, and equipment for the execution of the project. The contract for the construction of the Games Village, a comprehensive housing facility for visiting athletes, was awarded to China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation. However, construction went very smoothly and ended up being ahead of schedule. The official commissioning of the complex was on 8th of April 2003. Following its commissioning was the final leg of preparations for the Games. The Games that year were the largest in all African Games history. 60,000 athletes from 53 countries competed in 22 sports, watched over by 1,200 officials. When constructed, the stadium, which also had a Games Village, was among the largest, modern, and most expensive stadiums in Africa, costing over 360 million US dollars. It was back then regarded as one of the 50 most expensive stadiums ever built in the world, earning it quite some criticism. Among the facilities delivered to the federal government before the 2003 African Games were the 60,491 capacity covered main ball, residential suite and viewing area, 53 corporate suites, post offices, banks, media facilities, two scoreboards and floodlights, shops and kiosks for snacks, a helipad, 3,000 capacity indoor sport hall, 2,000 capacity gymnasium, 20,000 capacity swimming pool, tennis skirt, 3,000 capacity hockey stadium, baseball and softball complex. For the price, Nigeria received indeed a very modern stadium, able to hold just over 60,000 spectators on dub tired stands. The multidiscipline stadium is topped by a lightweight PTFE membrane roof at a height of 40 meters. The cable supported structure offers 33,000 meters of shade, providing canopy and was again one of the best of its kind when built. The Abuja Stadium meets the requirements of the international safety standards. It is equipped with emergency service units, closed circuit security cameras, as well as crowd control steel fencing. There are also standby firefighting equipment and metal detectors which have been put in place in case of any mishaps. Also, facilities within the stadium are designed and engineered in compliance with the requirements of international sports associations, particularly the Federation Internationale du Football Association, FIFA, and the International Association of Athletics Federation, IAAF. Aside the All-African Games, the stadium has hosted important football matches, such as World Cup qualifiers between Nigeria and other countries. The first game played at the stadium was a football match between two local rival teams, the Shooting Stars of Ibadan and Sunshine Stars of Akure on the 8th of April 2003. On June 12, 2019, President Muhammadu Buhari renamed the national stadium after Moshuda Biola, winner of the 1993 presidential election. On June 26, 2020, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari, unveiled the renamed stadium, Mushuda Biola National Stadium Abuja, as part of activities marking Democracy Day in the country and in commemoration of the second anniversary of the renaming of the sport stadium. The Mushuda Biola National Stadium, which has been left to a long period of no use and lack of good maintenance, Though it initially was considered state of the art, today is considered below any standard facility wise and environmental wise. Could the renaming of the stadium mean a new light and rebirth for it? Mr. John Joshua Akonji, the Special Advisor, Media, Minister of Youth and Sports Development, gives us some answers to many of our questions. The infrastructural decay which has happened over the years it's not just with this uh, administration. It's something that was a systemic issue over the years that has taken its toll on the state of facilities in Nigeria. You look at the Ahmad Bello Stadium in Kaduna. You look at the Aulaw Stadium in uh, Ibadan. You look at even the newest, the MQ Abiola Stadium in uh, the Dazi Moshud Abiola National Stadium in Abuja. And of course, the big one, the National Stadium in Surulay, Lagos. The, 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 the decay that has taken place as a result of um, poor funding, as a result of poor infrastructural development, as a result of poor maintenance culture 
which is not just peculiar to sports, but generally a thing that a lot of Nigerians are concerned with. And you must admit that this government has taken the bull by the horn by ensuring that things that are either told decayed are given a, ver a vibe, they are given a new lease of life through what they call public partnership, public-private partnership. Because people have argued over years that look, government alone cannot be pumping money into these facilities and also maintain it at the same time. Therefore, there's a need to partner with the private sector to ensure that these facilities are not only maintained, but they are also put to good use. Interestingly, by the grace of God, the one of the first steps that the minister you know, took was to sign an agreement with a private company that would, by the grace of God, very soon, the refurbishment of the, of the pitch. And of course, you're also looking at other facilities. Don't forget that before this uh, 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 era, the state of the facilities, the track, the uh, indoor sports hall, the swimming pool, were all in very deplorable state. And we, you know that, that with time, there's positive of fund generally across board. It's not just with sports, but a, across other sectors as well. And so the minister had to come up with very innovative plans to ensure that uh, individuals, corporate bodies, understood the key word, which is not just about maintenance, it's also about usage, it's also about ensuring that maintenance culture that has over the years been eroded is properly taken care of. And so you have a situation where a few weeks ago, the minister, you know, side by side with the minister of uh, FCDA, went on an inspection tour of that facility and after the unveiling of the facility during June 12th, and said, look, what are the things, what are the areas that we can revive? What are those things that we can do to ensure that these facilities is put to best use? And so we have a situation where there's a tripartite agreement of the individual, the corporate bodies, and of course, the ministry, where most of the facilities that are in very deplorable states are being refurbished. Some of them are already into use. The swimming pool is a very good example. That's a very good example. The indoor sports hall is a very good example. The, the other facility that was Blown, they were blown away by winds. The minister went there and said, look, we've got to fix these facilities. And so through that public uh, partnership, he has been able to revive most of the facilities at the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium in, in Abuja. He has also set up a task force on the Abuja, on the National Stadium in Surulele, Lagos, that will also ensure that a lot of things that are decayed are being properly taken care of. So it's a situation where, at the end of it all, the ministry owns the facilities, yes. But you are also not also going to uh, look at the state of the facilities vis-a-vis -vis refurbishment. You are also going to look at areas that you can put them to best use. And you can only achieve this when you also organize events, when you organize competitions, when you bring other people to come and look at the facilities so that, so that it can be you know, put to best use. And this is a practice like in most uh, parts of the countries where we have bigger facilities that have been put to best use. Public-private partnership. That is the way to go. And I know that this government has emphasized the need to go into partnership with individuals because they have, over the years, we have always complained. Why do we have infrastructural decay? Why do we have defect in infrastructural development and all that? And for us to be able to get out of the quarter mayor, we need to have a partnership with people that understand the nitty gritty of managing public uh, properties, infrastructure, and also change our mindset about the way we treat public uh, uh, properties. Public property, if we treat it as an individual property, will be better maintained, will be better structured, and will be put to the best, best use. Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching the infrastructure, where we focus on the states of major infrastructure. Earlier, we brought you a special feature on the Moshuda Biola National Stadium, and we had a special advisor, media to the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Mr. John Joshua Akanji, tell us about the effort made so far to refurbish the Moshuda Biola National Stadium and ways to stop the reoccurrence of abandonment or decay of sport infrastructure in the country. We we'll take a quick break now. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying. Apart from the Moshuda Biola National Stadium in Abuja, which is not presently in its best state, there are other sport facilities in the Federal Capital Territory that are also suffering from poor maintenance. Mr. Lushego David, goalkeeper trainer, Federal Fire Service, 
and a sport enthusiast spoke on some of these facilities, like the Era 3 field, which is currently known in its best state, and highlighted some of the reasons associated with this culture in Nigeria and way to go. We used to have a lot of boys that comes for training from morning to evening. Let's assume those boys are being cut off of this facility and they are now touts or arm robbers or whatever in town. Me and you will not enjoy Abuja. But this facility is what we can use to keep those boys out of, uh, 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 keep them out of the street so that at least we can get the best out of them. We have boys like uh, Drogba, they, they, they started from somewhere. We have people like a two, they started from somewhere. We have a lot of our boys, JJ Okocha and Co, started from somewhere. And as at that time, I don't think there's even this type of facility. But we have this type of facility, this might meet you, and it's not well maintained. It doesn't speak well of this country. It doesn't speak well of sport. We have a lot of things that can, a lot of boys, a lot of good footballers that can come out of here if it is well managed. Now it is locked down, there's grass, there's rodents, there's snakes, there's, oh, just name it. Now there's a construction that was done here. The field now has been taken over halfway by mud. And it's not, it doesn't speak well. I, presently, I play professional football with a team that is playing in the net. And tell me, you bring them to train here, it's just like you're training on a normal, on a, on a, on a, on a beer turf. This is a good turf for training, but it needs maintenance. The facility is not big enough, but the little it is, it should be maintained. Our maintenance culture, especially in this country, is not well punished. Assuming there is, there is provision for maintenance from day one, this field won't be like this. There was provision, but I don't know along the line, I think the thing went off. This is a world class, a world standard field. This is, this is, one of the best fields we have in Nigeria. But look at grass, look at rodents, look at mud. We don't even have light, no stage lights, no good road. It's just a reason that they wanted to do this COVID-19 stuff. We had this road and this, this. And for now, I hope we can just continue the maintenance. If we are not even staying here, maybe by now some people will have come to take off the nets, they will take off the poles and all this. But because we are always here, even with the lockdown, we'll come to see that, yes, the place is well kept. This is why we are here. If that maintenance culture can be continued from the office. FCT has, uh, I think the facilities in FCT over time has degenerated. It's up. Some are even out completely because we used to have neighborhood parks. We have in most of the districts. Growing up, I saw a lot of neighborhood parks, but all the neighborhood parks have been taken over by structures, you know. And the only available space I think we have in, in the FCT, the city center, is just area 10 and area 3, and which is grossly inadequate. But sports is looked more like uh, a professional uh, entity instead of business wise. So most times when these facilities are, are built, I don't think they factor maintenance into it and most times the facilities are just used for free and it's almost impossible for the government you know to maintain it spending so much money and not not getting anything from, from it i think the way i should be that government should maybe kind of do a ppp you know with private uh, partners so that they can hand it over to them and in turn they will maintain it and also be giving the government something from it. Thanks for staying, you're still watching the infrastructure. Lastly, before we go, as part of efforts to enhance facility development in the game of cricket, the Nigerian Cricket Federation has begun the construction of a new cricket over in the package B of the Moshuda Biola National Stadium. Actually, what's going on right now is the construction of the second top wicket here in Abuja. Um, to my left up there, you see the first one that was uh, reconstructed some time ago. And the second one is what is going on right now. This is the, the, the beginning stage of construction. Um, what we have done is the earthwork, the clearing of the surface, and we have succeeded in the drainages and the irrigation system for for this pitch. 
Um, the whole idea is um, to take advantage of the COVID-19 period to construct the pitch while um, since activities, um, cricket activities have been halted or sports activities across the world. So we're taking advantage of constructing this pitch, which is supposed to enhance um, our facility development as a federation. Because when this new board came in July of 2017, there were five uh, key strategic pillars for development and facility construction and development across the country was um, among those five pillars. So what you see here today is uh, a fulfillment of one of those um, responsibilities that the board came with. Um, exactly here now, if you look like I said the other time, on the other side is the first one that was constructed. This is the second one, the beginning stage. The essence of this pitch is not just for you to see grass. In the middle, there's what we call the tough wicket. It comprises of a hard core, clay, and of course grass. That makes it the tough wicket. And that is the acceptable international standard by the International Cricket Council. The essence of building tough wicket one is to um, improve our players' performance in terms of readiness for competitions and of course attract international competitions to Nigeria because in the past we used to have problems of players training, uh, players training in one surface and playing tournaments abroad in another surface. But when we have that facility here in Nigeria, it becomes easy for them to practice and get better performances when they travel um, abroad. So um, another part of what also we have also been doing is the fact that we have started with hosting friendly international tournaments. Last year we had the Rwanda national women's team come to Abuja and um, of course the Tough Wicket hosted them. The National Sports Festival was also played on this Tough Wicket and the Abuja secondary school um, competition was also played on the Tough Wicket. Not just in Abuja, across Nigeria. Um, the Nigeria Cricket Federation right now is engaging in facility development. So the, the fear of trying to maybe abandoning the, the facility is not there because the Federation has already put mechanism in place, staff in place, professional groundsmen in place to make sure that these facilities have been taken care of. COVID-19 obviously is um, slowing the process, but usually the board is looking at between the next six to 18 months, six months surfacing, but completion from where you can play game, we're looking between six to 18 months for the construction of this pitch. And because the other one was done about that same time, and that is the same time frame we're looking at. Sport has this amazing, unique way of making a positive impact in any society. Whether it's helping children, communities, or even nation, sport makes a difference on a daily basis. And to achieve Jan strides in the world of sport, both locally and internationally, we must revisit our infrastructure. And thankfully, with the administration of the new sport minister and its focus on facility maintenance, upgrade and management, we are hopeful that this old culture of infrastructural decay will remain a thing of the past. Very many thanks for watching and I hope you had a great time here. You can follow us on all our social media handles showing you on your screen now. For your contributions, observations and partnership on this program, you can write to us via this email address. Also to be part of the Infrastructure Watch segment, Simply send us images or videos of an infrastructure that needs attention in your locality via this WhatsApp number. I am Tina Oje. Until I see you again, do stay safe.